Sarah Davies from Crafters Companion and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this really beautiful elegant Christmas card. It's actually quite simple to do and we're using designs from the um, Sarah Signature series the Festive Wonder Collection. I'm going to start off with the embossing design in the background. So we're going to use the Festive Border uh, embossing folder from this range and you can see it's a six by six design but what I've done is I've just cut a piece of the Centura Pearl now this is the hint of gold Centura Pearl and you can see it's got that lovely shine through and I've just cut it slightly smaller than the embossing folder so you can see we're going to get that fabulous uh, frame all the way around the outside. Now these embossing folders are designed to work universally in all machines. I'm using it here with the cut emboss machine so I'm sandwiching it between the two air plates and then I've got the D plate on the bottom. Now what you'll find the embossing folders give a really nice deep emboss but they are designed to work universally with all different types of machines so if you want to use this with your cutler bulb or with your Sizzix Big Shot machine or the Grand Calibre machine, it will work with all of the different uh, die cutting and embossing machines out there on the market. So if I lift this back out, you can see there that beautiful sheen comes really nicely through the cardstock. And what I'm going to do is to get that blue effect on the outside, I'm using one of the Tim Holtz Distressing. So I'm going to use the Stormy Sky Colour. And we're going to use a product called Cut and Dry Foam. And I've just cut a small piece so that we can actually rub the ink over the Centura Pearl. Now when you're doing that, I would recommend protecting your work surface. And if you've got a craft mat, that's brilliant, the non-stick craft mat. If you haven't, um, a non-stick baking sheet would do exactly the same sort of thing, okay? So with the Stormy Sky, what we do to do this technique is you use the cut and dry foam and you lift the ink from the ink pad onto the cut and dry foam. Then we take most of it off onto the baking sheet. You can't even see it there. You wouldn't really know it was on there. And you start ever so gently rubbing it around the corner. And what you'll find is, as we build up, it highlights where the embossed piece is. So you can see it's really adding the most colour onto that embossed corner. And look at the difference it makes where we've got it on the embossed corner or where it's just plain. So I do the same again, pick up some of the ink, take off the excess, and then just start by applying a little bit onto the corner. And the thing is with this, you can always add more. It's impossible to take it away. So start off with a little bit and then build up the intensity of the colour as you go along. So really easy to do, but patience is a virtue here. Definitely, I know when I first started doing this technique, I would always be a little bit too heavy handed and uh, end up with way more income than what I needed. And it's, um, I mean, you can smudge it out, but you can't really take it off again. So. There we go. Now what you'll find is the Centura Pearl lends itself so well to this technique because even though we've applied colour on there, if I take this mat back out again, you can see how we've applied the colour but you've still got that fabulous sheen showing through the colour. So I'm going to mat and layer that now. I've got my base card ready and I'm just going to start off by layering first of all a piece of Centura. So I've gone with a much larger card base here. So I've gone with a seven inch square card base. And I'm just going to layer a piece of the Centura Pearl flat. And then I'm going to layer this one. You can see I've just cut this Centura Pearl ever so slightly larger. I'm going to do this flat as well. And matting and layering just really draws the eye into the centre of the card. If you've been card making for a while and feel like your cards just need a little bit of a lift, this is often one thing you can do just to give them a step up in, in terms of professionalism. Now, I'm going to raise that up under there, so I won't do that yet until we've done our snowflake working. So I'll put that to one side, finish with the embossing folder. If I just show you, so we're going to cut the snowflake design out now, and it's actually a two-part die, but all in one die cut. So this is the snowflake die that we're using, and I'm going to cut it, first of all, onto some blue cardstock. So if we want to cut the blue out, we would cut face down into the blue like this. Now again, because I'm using the cut and boss, the sandwich I would have is um, the B plate and the magnetic sheet go on top of your D and then you sandwich up in between your two A plates. So I'm going to lie the cardstock on and then I'm going to cut straight into the base A plate. 
So we're going to offer it into the machine and the first time through the machine it is going to cut. But all of the dyes in this collection are cut and embossed. So you would cut them through the first time and then I'm actually going to replace the magnetic sheet. I'm going to lift that out and lie over the rubber embossing mat. And what that will do is it will push the fibres of the cardstock into the um, die itself where you've got the embossing design. So I'll just show you. See, that's cut beautifully on there. So we can turn that over, take out the magnetic sheet, add on this rubber embossing mat and offer it back into the machine. And all the different machines out there on the market will have a form of rubber embossing mat that you can use. And it's just the really soft pliable one. They're not always black. Some of the machines, there's are a, a brownie tan colour. But when you've got the pliable one, that's what it's for, it's to push the fibres of the cardstock into the embossed design. So the second pass through here, I've now embossed that snowflake. And when we lift that out, and you can see there, this is exactly what I was talking about. Just lift this up. It does have a tendency to stick to the rubber embossing mat. All of this has now been embossed. So I just lift off my base cardstock, and it is a very delicate die, so be very, very careful with this one when you are working with it. Look at what a fabulous aperture that leaves though. So I've got other tutorial videos that you can watch or will be coming out that you can see where we use this as a beautiful aperture too. So if I just lift this on, you can see there, this central snowflake is one die in and of itself. So if I just lift that out and I'm doing this, you wouldn't actually lift them out back to front like this, I'm doing it to show you. So there's the central piece. And then you can see we've got the wider die that's left here. So I'm just going to take them a little bit at a time. But because it's such a fine die, you do just want to be very, very careful as you're lifting it out of your die itself. So there we go. And you've got plenty of release points on the die. Now, because obviously when I'm lifting this off, it is just slightly um, starting to warp a little bit. What you could do if you weren't in a, a huge rush is you could just put it between two books or put it be back through your cut and boss machine just to flatten it back out. So I'm just going to release some of those center parts that we didn't want in. And then what I've done is I've actually die cut this again in the Centura Pearl. So we've got one die cut in blue and then I've got another version exactly the same die cut in the pearl. And I'm just going to stick the two of them together. Well, we're not going to stick them. We're going to place them back together to make them back into one um, die cut really. So there we go. We've released all those extra little bits out. And you can see the embossed detail appearing here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make this back up as though I were die cutting. But we don't actually have the die in here, which is not a problem. And I'm going to lie that on. And you see, here's the one that I've already done. There's the central piece cut out. So the central piece is just going to lie back inside. And I just want to flatten it all back down together again. And you find even just by pushing it together, it's going to kind of hold it as one die. So what I will do is um, just take a, a, a spare piece of card and put that on the top there just to hold it in place. And then pop it through the machine. So this is what I was saying you might want to do. If you want to put it between a couple of books just to flatten everything back up as one. While we're doing that, I can get the rest of the base card ready. So that is going to layer onto there, but we're going to put this in here first. So there's the other white piece that I've cut. So that is going to go in the background. And we can hold that in place. I'm going to stick everything together using the Collal Tacky glue. So I'm just going to lie some of this glue across the central piece here and then just put some on the very tips 
of all my snowflakes and I'm only using the tiniest little amount each time it's literally just to hold this in place so that it's going to position on there perfectly flat right in the center of my card then if I take out my design it's actually quite stuck to the rubber mat here so I'm just going to gently peel that off it's been through the machine twice there well, it's just flattened it back down So delicate there we go so then that delicate dye there I'll take it a little piece at a time I'm going to offset so I'll pop a little bit more glue on the top of these again and don't worry because the collal all-purpose the tacky glue that we're using here does dry perfectly flat so can you see I'm just off centering that one there and just tapping it with my finger and what I didn't do there is shall I see if I can lift it back up is put some glue on the very tips so it's just hard to stick it down there so glue on the tips will just help it to stick down it's just such a delicate dye you just need to have a bit of patience with it and there we go and you can see that tacky glue really does take straight away so that is held up perfectly in place and then that central piece we don't need the blue central piece but there's nothing to stop you keeping that for another project that then just lies in the center and you do have a little bit of maneuverability time with the tacky glue before it's going to set there we go really is a stunning die design and then notice I didn't put glue on the ends of these so that I can just then lift these up a little bit and it just gives you a little bit of dimension in the card so I worked with this flat I'm just going to finish it off I've got a little bit of um, just a few gems here so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue and that tacky glue is brilliant for things like um, flat black gems anything that's a slightly different material you know that this is going to be able to cope with it no problem so I'm going to stick this down from the top I'm just going to take a little bit of time to take there but once it's stuck it will stick absolutely firm there we go and then I've also got just a tiny little ribbon there so just a little bit of glue into the center piece and then hold that in place I find these porky tools are brilliant when you need to get into little small areas like this so then just a few finishing points I've got my easy crystal gem applicator and I'm just going to pop a few crystals into the four corners And then where we want to mount that onto the front of the card but I wanted to give it dimension remember I said this would be the last thing that I would do I'm going to use the um, collal glue and all of these tools that I'm using with it so the winder key here for example all come included in the box and I'm just putting some globules of glue onto the base card and then this will just sit on that card perfectly right look at that I've been doing it upside down that's why it's great to have that glue because you obviously have plenty of time to get it perfect and then you can see I did have one last little gem in the center there just to finish off that fabulous very very detailed grande Christmas snowflake